Hi everyone, welcome to the information session for the accelerated second degree BSN program at the MSU College of Nursing. We're really glad that you've joined us for this information session and we thank you for your interest in the program itself. My name is Beth Yale Farnham. I am the advisor for the ABSN program and I'm looking forward to teaching you more about it. So let's get started. In today's session, we're going to learn more about the ABSN program in general. We'll dive deeper into the curriculum, what you might expect to study each semester, costs and financial aid, what might happen to our student population after they graduate from the ABSN program, making sure that the ABSN program is the right fit for you, and in particular, we'll talk quite a bit about the admissions process. Our ABSN program is a full-time, 15-month program. Our students begin their coursework in each summer semester. So their structure is a summer, fall, spring, summer sequence. All of our students start in mid-May and would graduate in the following August. All of our curriculum is delivered in person, and so you can expect to be either here on campus or at our Detroit Cohort Center, which we'll talk about later. Courses are taken during the day, and there are even possible evening or weekend clinical assignments. We're only able to select about 60 students to be admitted each May, which has resulted in a competitive and limited seat admission process. We are also CCNE accredited. We're very proud of that. And students who graduate from our program are eligible to sit for their NCLEX examination, which results in the RN license. You may know our program was formerly uh, called AO, which stands for Accelerated Option. We have made a switch. We now refer to it as ABSN, which stands for Accelerated BSN. We're happy to report that we have a cohort model. Our students take their courses together. So the students who you meet in your first courses will also be the same students who will help you to get through even your last courses in the program. There's a lot of camaraderie that's built throughout that process. There are clinical experiences that our students encounter every semester. Those sites do vary, and they can be nearby, they can be far away. We try to make them as convenient as possible for our students. We send students out in groups of eight so that students can feel um, supported in that environment. We also send a clinical instructor from the MSU College of Nursing with those eight students. That person is there to help to identify patients who may be appropriate for the skill level, and that person is there as an instructor, a teacher, a safety net for our students. And so that group will then attend all of those experiences again together. Our NCLEX pass rate is at currently 97%, which is well above our national average of 90%. We're extremely proud of that as well. And we have a 98% post-graduation placement. That's for students who have either selected to um, be employed straight after graduation or they're pursuing further education, which they can do here at MSU as well. We do have two campuses that are options for our ABSN program. Our Detroit cohort is run through the um, Detroit Medical Center in downtown Detroit. Approximately 16 students from the 60 that we select each summer will study there at that location. There may be some instances where those students are asked to travel here to East Lansing. Those instances include our May orientation date, a few different times each semester for lab simulations and other opportunities as well. A student can indicate their site preference on the application itself. And once placed, cohort assignment is not negotiable. The alternative to the Detroit cohort is our East Lansing cohort. So many more of the 60 accepted students study here in East Lansing. They'll attend classes in East Lansing and their clinicals are within a two hour radius of campus. Again, you can indicate that preference on your application and once placed, cohort assignments are not negotiable. The curriculum itself. Your first semester is a summer semester. You may notice that we've called this semester nursing two slash three. That's in keeping alignment with our traditional BSN program. So after this initial summer semester, all of the clinical or all of the coursework that a student will be completing is in lockstep with the traditional curriculum sequence as well. 
As you can see, the first semester you'll be taking three courses, Nursing 205, 322, and 324. There are a total of 11 credits that semester, which does still count as full-time since it is a summer semester. Your uh, coursework will occupy about four days of the week between your classes and your clinical experiences. And in that semester, you'll be logging close to 100 clinical hours. Your second semester is called Nursing 4. It is a fall semester. That semester contains Nursing 322, 334, and 371. 12 total credits. Courses will be delivered on Fridays, and your clinicals will be two to three remaining days of the week. In that second semester, you'll be logging approximately 270 clinical hours. Your third semester is a spring semester. That semester, you'll be taking 445, 436, 437, and 375. Again, it's 12 credits. In that particular semester, classes are delivered on Thursdays, and clinicals are two days per week, two additional days per week. And they'll be logging, our students log about 180 clinical hours that semester. Your final semester is another summer semester. You'll wrap up by taking nursing 460, 471, 481, and 475. Another 12 credits, classes are delivered on Mondays, and clinicals are an additional two days per week. That semester, that final semester, you'll be logging close to 225 clinical hours. Let's talk a little bit more about those clinical placements. We do have a clinical placement coordinator here on campus who will be assigning those clinical groups. And so you're not responsible for finding those locations on your own, which is a really big help. Again, those groups are of eight students. Students are responsible for their own transportation, but we have seen quite a bit of carpooling in the past. So no worries there. Clinical sites may or may not change each semester, so we ask our students to be flexible. You might be curious to know where those places have been in the past. So here is a list of our sample clinical sites. We do have clinical experiences both in hospitals, so our healthcare systems that are nearby. We also have some community-based sites for our early childhood development centers or our assisted living facilities. Costs and financial aid. How are we going to pay for all of this good education? Attendance costs can be found on the controller's office website. That's a portion of the MSU website in general. The ABSM program is 47 credits in length. So if you ever wanted to multiply a tuition rate by the number of credits to get a total tuition rate, um, 47 credits is the number that you'd be utilizing there. And our current tuition rates, as you can tell, are $759.80 per credit for in-state residents. And for non-residents or international students, that figure is $784.80. We also have student taxes of $31.50 each semester and a student health science fee of $100 each semester. We want to make sure that you're well aware of all these costs, not to scare you, but just to make sure that you're making an informed decision and you have your eyes wide open. In that regard, there are some additional costs in the first and the last semester. We want to make sure that all of our students are just well aware of this so that nothing comes as a surprise. So as you can see, this list contains things that are all the way from uniforms and stethoscopes all the way up through your clinical ID badge or your nursing skills bag that contains all of the materials that you'll need to be practicing in our labs. There are also some additional costs to be incurred in the fourth semester, the final semester. Those costs are associated with your um, NCLEX examination, either registration or preparation, and any sort of graduation materials that might be necessary. Don't worry, there are ways to alleviate those costs as well. We do encourage our students to pursue federal financial aid through the FAFSA. Since this is a second degree for all of our students, you may be eligible for less uh, funds if you've already utilized some of your federal funds. There are also nursing specific organizations who are very generous and may be offering some scholarships. We at the College of Nursing also offer our own scholarships. The application for the scholarships given through the College of Nursing are going to be due every year on March 1st. 
those funds will be available to you for your uh, second semester. Outside scholarships are available as well. Even a simple Google search will get you started in the right direction. And we would encourage you to start looking as early as possible. What happens to some of our students after they complete the ABSN program? Here's a list of where our alumni are currently employed. This is just the tip of the iceberg. We do have a very large Spartan nursing network that we're extremely proud of that um, basically anywhere you go, you might run into a fellow Spartan nurse, whether that's here in Michigan, in the United States, or even internationally as well. Is the ABSN program the right fit for you? We do recognize that the program is uh, a bit of a, an aggressive program, being that it's an accelerated curriculum. So here are some things to consider. The students who have been the most successful in our program are the students who are very able to devote all of their attention to the program itself. So we like to see a lot of students who, um, who have schedule flexibility when it comes to things that are outside of the classroom, such as family obligations or community involvement. Your comfort level with math and science is also important, being that the nursing curriculum is closely linked to those areas. It's very difficult to be employed while working in the ABSN program. We can't say it's impossible, but again, our students who are the most successful are the ones who are very devoted to their studies first. Clinicals do begin very quickly in the first semester. That's something good to know. Health insurance is required. That's for the safety of you as you're going into the clinical setting as well. Those out-of-pocket costs that we talked about in the first and last semester, and then the potential travel of, of travel to clinical sites also. Okay, the moment that everyone has been waiting for, the admissions process. Who's eligible to apply to the ABSN program? Students are eligible to apply if they hold a bachelor's degree, and that bachelor's degree can be still be in progress at the time that you are applying to the program, but does need to be completed before the program begins in mid-May. We require a minimum of a 2.75 cumulative GPA from your first bachelor's degree, and a minimum of a 2.0 in each of our 10 prerequisite courses. The completion or near completion of anatomy and physiology at the time of your application is required as well. We will hold for final fall grades if you happen to be taking anatomy and or physiology in your fall semester, the same semester that you're submitting your application. We also require the completion of pathophysiology, which is Nursing 300, anatomy and physiology no more than five years prior to the program start. So for example, this upcoming cycle will begin, the program start date is summer 2020. We wouldn't want to see pathophysiology, anatomy, or physiology credits that are older than summer of 2015. We do have a new opportunity to, dis to describe to you this year. It's called Academic Restart. If you remember from the previous slide, I described a minimum cumulative GPA of 2.75. The Academic Restart program is an opportunity for students to replace their cumulative GPA with a new Academic Restart GPA. It has nothing at all to do with the prerequisite courses, but the Academic Restart GPA is for students who have taken 12 or more credits following the completion of their first degree. If there are 12 or more credits to be calculated, we can go ahead and take a look at what those scores are, and some, we can calculate that academic restart GPA to replace a student's cumulative GPA. The range of opportunity for that is anything taken after the completion of your first degree, all the way up through the fall semester when you're applying to the program. Speaking of those prerequisite courses, we do have 10 prerequisite courses, as you can see here on the slide, seven of which are considered to be science prerequisites, and you'll see those on the left. And we have three non-science prerequisites that are on the right. 
As a review, anatomy and physiology must be complete or almost complete at the time of your application. If there are any other remaining prerequisite courses that you still need to take, you can utilize the spring semester between when you apply and when the program begins to go ahead and wrap those up. We'll be double and triple checking to make sure that those courses are, are um, completed and passed with a 2.0 or higher. Which leads us to how can you complete those prereqs? If you do have some still left to go, you do have options for completing those prerequisites either at Michigan State or elsewhere. If you're considering taking those prerequisites at Michigan State, I have a few questions to ask you first. The first being, would you be considered new to Michigan State University or have you studied at MSU previously? If you're new to MSU, you can take those prerequisite courses either as a lifelong student. Lifelong students apply through the registrar's office and are unfortunately not eligible for financial aid. Or you could apply as an undergraduate transfer student, that's through the admissions office. If you go that route, you cannot declare nursing or pre-nursing as your major. Those designations are saved for students who are admitted or into our, one of our nursing programs or are coming straight from high school. So neither one of those, unfortunately, would apply to you. We do see quite a few students declare majors such as human biology or human development and family studies, for example. If you've studied at MSU previously, a simple readmission application will suffice in order to take up some of your remaining prerequisite courses. That application is also through the registrar's office. It's just a way to reactivate your file. But again, please do not declare a nursing or pre-nursing major uh, as that's not the correct path. If you're considering completing prerequisites at another institution, please know that we don't give preference to MSU curriculum. Transferring in prerequisite courses is 100% fine. You'll want to check our transfer equivalency website, transfer.msu.edu, first. You are able to check out what uh, equivalencies may exist at institutions that are near you. If you cannot find an equivalency for the course you're looking for, Go ahead and email the College of Nursing. We'll make sure that the email address is listed at the end of this presentation to see if it's been pre-approved. We do have some additional courses that have been approved in the past for just specifically the ABSN program, which is why they don't show up on that transfer tool website for the entire university. If the answer is no to that request, if they have not been pre-approved in the past, we can then pursue the course review request process to see if they could potentially be approved. A little bit more about that course review request process, how that works. You'll email uh, nursing at hc.msu.edu with the course name, subject, and course number, and where you've taken that course, with that information, there are going to be three possible responses. Either it's already been approved in the past and we're good to go, or we would then potentially deny that course, you have to find another course, or it would need to be reviewed. If it needs to be reviewed, there's a simple form to fill out that would accompany a syllabus, a course syllabus. If you could send those two items to the College of Nursing, we'll be going ahead and moving forward with the process to have our associate dean review those for equivalency. It's recommended that you submit course review requests before you take the course. It's also recommended that you submit before you apply to the ABSF program. The earlier the better. We sometimes need to wait quite a while for the responses to these requests. We will allow up to four weeks of pro for processing. We'll get back to you via email with the results. And the deadline to submit course review requests is November 1st. We do need time for those responses before the application deadline of December 1st. So how would a student apply to the program? Here's where things get exciting. For the first time this year, we're offering our application process entirely online. We're very excited about that. We're on track for our application to become available in early September. It will be available through the College of Nursing website, which is nursing.msu.edu. And as usual, will always be due by December 1st by 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please note that the application is set to end at that time, so be sure to hit your submit button well in advance of 5 p.m. 
Again, that's Eastern Standard Time in case someone is applying from a different time zone. Please also be prepared to complete the application at one time. We do have a sample application near where you found this uh, presentation link. Our sample application will give you a really good idea of the questions you're going to be asked so that you can be well prepared with the information that you'll need. There's only one submission allowed per IP address, so please don't submit unless you're entirely happy with your entire application. There's unfortunately not a way to log back in to change your responses once you've submitted the application. Admission is contingent upon the completion of your first bachelor's degree and the completion of all 10 program prerequisite courses. Be prepared when you're filling out your application to provide your academic history and information regarding your prerequisite courses. It'd be a great idea to have your transcript open in front of you when you're ready to do that application. As part of the application, you'll be asked to provide five essay responses or short answer responses. You can read the prompts right below. Those prompts are also included on that sample application. It would be a great idea to maybe um, answer those prompts in a Word document so that when you're wanting to fill out the application itself, you can simply copy and paste. Each prompt response will be limited to 1,500 characters, something to be aware of as well. Another portion of the application are professional references. Two professional references are required. We recommend that you ask someone who can speak positively on your behalf. Faculty, supervisors, mentors, coaches, those are great options. We see a lot of those in the past. We ask that it's someone who has worked closely with you within the last five years. And it can be really anyone except for close friends or family members. As part of the application, you'll be asked to provide us with their name, the institution and organization they represent, their relationship to you, and also their email address. With that email address, we will then send the um, reference form to them via email. So if you could let them know that that's on its way, that would be very helpful. We wanna make sure that it doesn't uh, get filtered into their spam messages. Your MSU application. So the university's application is a separate application from the College of Nursing ABSN application. So your MSU application will be a different style depending on your past relationship with the university. If you're brand new to MSU and you've never studied here before or applied here before, the undergraduate transfer application is what you'll be looking for. You'll specifically want to wait for the summer 2020 undergraduate transfer application to become available. Sometimes that's not open or available until October or November, so please do not let that encourage you to wait to submit your um, ABSN application, go ahead and submit your ABSN application while you're waiting for the university's application to open. On that application, you'll list major code 4023, which is the correct code for the ABSN program. And you'll wanna make sure that you submit both the College of Nursing application and your MSU application by December 1st. If you're a current or previous MSU student, you only need to submit the College of Nursing application by December 1st. We can wait for the MSU application portion. For you, that's called a readmission application. We can wait on that until we know if you've been accepted into the ABSN program or not. Transcripts. We will need official copies of every transcript that you have sent to the MSU Office of Admissions. Every school attended needs to be represented. Please also allow time for processing. The earlier you can send those, the better. If you happen to be an international applicant, there are a couple extra steps for you as well. Those you typically include a course by course transfer evaluation by one of the organizations listed below. The application review process. So if our applications are due by December 1st, again, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, applications will be held for final fall grades and our admissions committee will be meeting in January to make their decisions. That committee is comprised of faculty and administrators. I do not serve on that committee. Incomplete, late, 
and ineligible applications will not be reviewed. So make sure you get everything in on time. There are no point systems or interviews. Instead, uh, we offer that holistic admissions process uh, where all of your application materials will be evaluated. The resume, the letters of recommendation, your essay responses, and the grades as well. GPA calculations. For each applicant, I'll be calculating three GPAs, four if you include the Academic Restart GPA calculation. First, your cumulative GPA. All college level coursework will be evaluated unless you're participating in Academic Restart. That's always calculated by us. The second GPA is your science GPA. It includes all science related prerequisites, of which there are seven. A minimum of a 2.0 is required in each course. Once a 2.0 has been earned, the course cannot be repeated at MSU per MSU policy, but you can complete that course over again if you prefer at a different institution. As long as you've taken it somewhere, we'll be able to utilize the most recent attempt. A non-science GPA is also calculated. That includes those three non-science prerequisites. Those are lifespan of human development, human nutrition, and introduction to psychology. Again, calculated by us. A minimum of 2.0 is required in each course. And again, the repeat policy at MSU is that once a 2.0 has been earned, the course cannot be repeated at MSU. Feel free to repeat at a different institution. Just like the science GPA, the most recent attempt for each course is what will be considered. This next slide is my favorite slide. The admissions profiles for the past several years, you can see here, I'm gonna stay on this slide for quite a while, it seems to be the favorite of most applicants. We typically receive at least twice as many applications as we have spaces available. Again, 60 spaces are available to start each summer semester. Of the applications that we receive, still twice as many as seats available are eligible for the program. Our, all of our applicants have a GPA range of about mid to high 2.0, all the way up to nearly a 4.0. For the students of that group who are admitted, so the students who are selected, their GPAs range from anywhere in the low three points to a 4.0. As you can see, our average admitted cumulative GPA has been right around 3.6 to 3.7 for the past several years. And if you dig a little bit deeper, the average admitted science GPA is right in that mid three point range as well. We encourage you to apply even if you don't see yourself reflected in these statistics. As long as you have a 2.75 GPA or higher and a 2.0 in the 10 prerequisite courses, you are an eligible applicant. Each year, these statistics do change a bit from year to year, depending on the qualifications of the other applicants each year. How will you be notified if you've been selected for the program? Notification of result of your application will arrive to you by mail. We're hoping that can happen in February. So please do make sure that the address on your application is current and accurate. There are three decisions that can be sent to you. Um, that would be that congratulations, you are admitted. Uh, congratulations, you're on our wait list. Or unfortunately, there was no space available for your admission this year. We encourage you to apply again next year. After admission communication from our office will be to you via email. So again, make sure that that email address is accurate and current as well. Waitlist, you may have noticed I spoke briefly about a waitlist. If we aren't able to select you as one of our top 60 applicants, we do select approximately 25 students to comprise a waitlist. Students can be offered a seat as late as our ABSN orientation which occurs one week prior to classes starting. I know that's a really long time to wait from February to mid-May. We do recognize that sometimes some of our top applicants are applying to several different programs, 
And every once in a while, they take the opportunity to study elsewhere or they just aren't able to accept the seat that we've offered to them. And when that happens, we'll work our way down the wait list and offer those seats to students who have, have fallen into that category. And it does happen each year. Please do stay enrolled in your prerequisites if you're taking any prerequisites in the spring semester, just in case. And unfortunately, if you're not offered admission, waitlisted students are encouraged to reapply for next year's cycle. Our waitlist does dissolve at the time that classes start each year. So we're unfortunately unable to carry that waitlist from year to year. Thanks so much for being with us this afternoon. We encourage you to stay connected. If you have any questions as a result of this presentation, please don't hesitate to give us a call at the number listed at the top. Send us a quick email to con.nurse at msu.edu. There's also a really robust and frequently asked questions section on our website. And we also are present on the social media scene as well. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate the time that you've spent in learning more about the program. And we look forward to seeing your application soon. Thank you.